This guy is CPX4, which is the three with the safety on it. Start things off as always with our full mag plus one. Got the safety on. I'm using the pinky rest because, well, it's a little gun and I have large hands. And this is more comfortable. Dang it. Let's see, 11 rounds of 380 using Fiocchi 95 grain. I was shooting at the uh, top 10 ring on our normal target there and pretty consistent lock back and recoil was what you'd expect from 380. I'm obviously not accustomed to double action so pulling a little bit but uh, let's see how it does with what's for dinner. And for what's for dinner we're starting off at 56 grain. I'll let you read and see what we're shooting. Three shots of each type. You'll notice that all of these bullets have a different size. Overall length slightly different, their tip a little different, their curvature a little different, and that's why we run these to see what the gun will cycle. Also steel and aluminum have different expansion and contraction rates than regular brass, and nickel plated brass has a different rate as well. So what we're looking at is one, does it pick up off of slide lock? Then does the round generate enough energy to cycle the gun and pick up the next one? The third one is really just kind of a random bonus there. And then lastly, does it lock the slide open? Now with some of these sky mags, we have experienced failure to lock open uh, with the mag itself. So it may not always be the ammunition's fault with this gun. Let's see how she does. All right, so we're gonna be starting what's for dinner off today with the Ruger ARX. These are 56 grain. I'm going to aim at the circle number one. Still high and right. And next is Inceptor's 60 grain. It's circle number two. Oh, safety. We're trying the safety out. All high and right. Next we have the Civil Trainer Lead Free 65 grain. It's circle number three. I don't know where that went. Definitely shot a lot better. Next up we have the Colt Solid Copper Hollow Point. These are 80 grain. This is for circle number four. Little bit of a flinch. I like that one. That shot really well. Yeah, it did. Just like that, the rain is gone. But we're on to Hornady's critical defense in 90 grain.
That last one did not lock the slide to the rear. Felt really soft. Check for a squid. And there is. Oh, well, it didn't eject the rod. I locked it to the rear. The the case was still in the chamber, but the magazine is And on number six, we've got PMC's Starfire in an aptly sized box. This is 95 grain uh, hollow point. And when I've shot Starfires in other calibers, it has certainly been a fire. We'll see how this guy does. Nothing like brass bouncing off your hat. Shut okay, didn't lock back. That was the round and not the magazine. I just checked by pulling the slide back and uh, it locked open on the empty mag. So Starfire did not generate enough Next up speed. at 95 grain, we've got the Blazer Aluminum. If uh, you're curious, we use aluminum because it expands and contracts at a different rate than steel. And so sometimes sticks in chambers depending on the timing of the gun We've got to use the safety we're going to try to use the safety throughout this review off and on since uh most folks ignore those in their reviews and doesn't give you an idea of how stiff or easy they are to activate and deactivate target number seven with the aluminum Wow. That shot really well and locked the slide back. Who says cheap ammo can't perform? Now we've got another 95 grainer, this time in brass. This is the Arms Core. Arms Core ammo in past experience has proven to be a little soft shooting. Got a birthday bump. Did it chamber? It did. Of course, it's such a short stroke that me doing that caused the round to pop out. Let me reload that and uh, see if I can get another birthday bump. Nope, must have just been barely hanging on the uh, catch there. A little wide that time. Did lock the slide back though. Now we've got 94 grain. Changing things up a little. This is the PPU jacketed hollow point and these are very snubby shaped, but a lot of 380s tend to be. So, should cycle. Target number nine. Very soft shooting. Through that third one, but uh, the first two were pretty close. Locked the slide back fine. And like I said, very soft in the hand. Now at 91 grain, going back a little bit, sorry for the confusion, uh, tool ammo, steel cased ammunition. Uh, steel, like aluminum, has a different expansion and contraction rate than brass, so it can cause sticking or too loose in the chamber sometimes. Also, it has a different friction than the brass. This top round being wet, inserted just <laughs> quite easily for target number 10. Two out of three weren't bad. Didn't lock the slide back, but it is the mag this time, not the ammo. So, um, gonna try a new segment. We did this on one other gun, and that is doing a ready up and two shot drill at seven yards defensive distance on just a blank torso. The idea there is to get a feel for how the gun operates 
in such a situation, especially defensive oriented guns like this. And since it has a manual safety, we'll be engaging and disengaging the safety each time. Now, not claiming to be an expert at this, but it is a realistic drill and gives us a feel for the gun. So we've got 10 rounds of Fiocchi 95 grain, basic full metal jacket, and we'll each be doing it. Could be just five if we manage to have two good, <laughs> five good doubles. If not, because of a trigger that's new to us in double action, might be more than that, but let's see how it goes. Starting at a low ready with the safety on. Safety back on. That was a slip of the trigger. I didn't let out far enough. Oh, the fun's all gone. <laughs> so it didn't lock the slide back that time. Um, we've noticed that on some of these magazines. See the mags in there? It's not locking. Um, but uh, I'd say that was controllable, and that was at a decent cadence. It's just a long stroke with that double action. Safety, not a problem at all for me to disengage on the way up and just rest my thumb on it. So I haven't done a lot of these drills. I'm a little bit nervous, but I am excited to see, interested in seeing, I should say, how um, the safety thing is going to work for me. It's, it's easy to work, but will I remember to engage and disengage it every time? So here we go. Safety's on. Trigger pull will get you safety off. That was backwards. <laughs> safety off and up. Safety on. Safety off and up. Safety on. Safety off and up. Safety on. And I'm saying this to remind myself. Probably annoying to listen to. And now my fun is over. <laughs> that was fun. I really enjoyed that. So I was a little bit nervous about this drill, but I think I did fairly well. Um, and I know that saying safety on, safety off probably got a little bit tiring to hear for you all, but it helped remind me that that was part of the drill and part of what, you know, I would need to have in my mind in a situation such as close self-defense like this. It was fun. I'll do it again. Now for five shots from seven yards, using some Fiocchi 95 grain full metal jacket. And we did notice earlier the uh, sighting on this is a little funky, so all our shots are hitting a little high and right. We'll see, maybe uh, a raindrop or two will push it back down for us at the left circle square. That safety definitely works. Not bad for a little gun that costs about a buck fifty. All right, and for my five accuracy shots, I'm going to be aiming at the right circle square. That is definitely high. Interesting. So we're back from the range with the Sky CPX4. Uh, what's for dinner? Some ready ups and uh, our basic battery of shooting. Uh, we did 
do have to disclaim, you might have seen it, have to learn the sights. Um, and before you start laughing about that, obviously we've used pistol sights before, um, typically aim from the top edge of the rear sight being aligned with the top edge of the front sight, equal height and equal light, following that expression. For the sky, that didn't work. We were shooting about 2 o'clock, how far away, would you say? Probably 15, 10, 15 yards. Yeah, 10, 15 yards, it was hitting 2 o'clock uh, by a good foot or so until we lined up the dots. So lining up the dots, ignoring the sight edges uh, was how we aimed. Other than that, what uh, were your impressions? I really enjoyed shooting this today. Um, I've shot skies similar to this and I don't remember enjoying them as much as I enjoyed shooting this today. I did not feel as much of the recoil in my hand. I was able to keep it on target. My groups were better. Um, this one does have the safety that's ambidextrous which is really easy to use which was fun and a nice um, reminder for when you're carrying a gun with a safety and making that extra step. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it, um, the, the little pocket 380s have made us all forget how comfortable 380 can be to shoot. You add into that uh, the quad lock system where it's not just a blowback and the gun's a lot softer to shoot, uh, becomes a lot more comfortable. Uh, safety engagement was not an issue. It's a short little safety and it seems like it's pivoting backwards almost, but down for fire, which is easy. You rest your thumb on there like you would with the 1911 and through the recoil, it stays on fire. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, and I didn't have to change my hand grip to do that. Yeah. Be because that it works so well. Yeah, it, it met with both Tia's knuckle and my knuckle despite, despite the fact that our hands are greatly different in size. Uh, shot pretty darn well and some of those loads I was really impressed with the accuracy I was not expecting that out of uh, a short barrel um, but uh, good job to Sky we're really looking forward to getting our hands on one of the ones that has the, the red dot on there I think once we add the red dot advantage and take away uh, our complication with these sights I don't know if it's just us or if it's just this gun or if it's the sight design I'm not going to blame any of those uh, I think uh, it would be a good gun Thanks for watching.